Alright guys, well, I'm feeling a little bit conversational tonight, so I'm about to just talk about a little bit of my personal thoughts and ideas today. I'm not going to edit this video. Editing is for sissies, like me, who edit all their videos. But I won't edit this one, because I'll, I'll just go on and on about as far as Celine Dion's heart. Now, uh, my sister's out tonight at a party. What is the deal with that? I don't like parties. In fact, I've been to one party. Ricky's birthday party. That's it. Well, that's the only one I've been to of my own will, basically. You know, I've had to go to other, I don't know, dinner parties and gatherings and stuff. Not my type of thing. Not really. Dances. I went to one dance. It was fun. But I am pretty sure I would not think any other dances were fun. So I don't need to worry about that one bit. At New College, the parties were called walls because it's an outdoor party right next to a wall. And I never went to any of those and I'm positive I would not have fun at a wall because basically stand around and blow your body and drink and repeat which is not my type of thing to do I'm not, I do not communicate very well through dance and I do not communicate very well through drinking no matter what anybody says that stuff does not taste good Right. See, I'm starting this new website, carlinrip.com. And basically the idea is you can go to the website and you can listen to a joke by George Carlin. Pretty cool website, huh? It'll be the hit of the summer. You'll see. It'll be up soon. Good idea, I think. I may not be able to capitalize greatly from it, but it's an adventure. Another thing. A few things I've been thinking about today. First thing, about the salmonella outbreak. If you were in the U.S., and if you watched the news last week, you would have heard about salmonella. And uh, actually it was more than a week. Because what happened was... There were some bad tomatoes from China, apparently. They actually figured out they weren't from China, they were from Mexico. So, more unfounded claims by the media. But, what I'm here to talk about today is that... Uh, basically, the CDC estimates there's about 800,000 salmonella infections per year in the US. How many came from this salmonella panic we were all talking about and then forced Subway to inconvenience me and their business by not having tomatoes? How can I eat a Subway sandwich without tomatoes? Basically every other food service institution in the country took a small hit because they didn't have tomatoes. Tomatoes are in just about everything. You know, unless you, unless, you know, pizza sauce, I guess they don't care about because they have to ultra pasteurize it probably but back to the point how many deaths how many infections were there from that salmonella outbreak there were 39 in New Mexico only out of 800,000 that sounds like a made up panic that we don't need to worry about one bit exactly like MRSA bird flu and every other media generated hysteria wow Bird flu, for existence, for example, never existed. Everybody talked about it. Everybody was scared of it. It never existed. It was, it was, it, it was, it's the media again talking about what could happen, what may happen, what will happen. It's not talking about what is happening. It's unfactual news. It's speculation. Everything else is opinion. Where are the facts here? When I read a news article from Yahoo, which is which 
you know, the, are passed around pretty much because it's the because all Yahoo articles they say AP or Reuters at the top because you know those are the two news sources we get all our news from. Very wise choice. But what kind of sources do they have? They never cite any sources. Never. In a science article, I expect to see sources cited. That's just me, because I look at science. I want to see a le at least. This, I like to see academic rigor, as it's called formally. I like to see to be able to look up something that they said, to be able to prove things. In a science article, they always have. They always talk to at least one expert because it looks good. It sounds good. Talking to an expert doesn't mean anything in science. It means it, it means you're a journalist. It means you're a journalist if you think that's going to mean anything. Hey, look at this cup. This is the cup I'm drinking out of. It's probably one of my favorite cups. From SeaWorld, Florida. There's me. There is my egg and sperm donor. And, uh... Having me on a ride on what looks like a dolphin. It's a very good cup. We've had it for, I don't know, maybe 15 years. Now my last video, Dent, I told my dad about. And uh, I noticed that nobody really seemed to get the video. Maybe that's, if anybody's fault, you know, probably would be my fault. Because uh, I'm supposed to make stuff you get. And if you don't get it, then, well, it must be bad. No. Okay, that doesn't make any sense at all, but... Because the idea of the video was, sat down, look at the quarter. Yes, it's a real quarter. Yes, there was a real dent. I didn't show it to you. But... Because I looked at the quarter and I thought, hey, anybody not really looking for the dent would never see it. Anybody that actually looked at the quarter close up would see it right away. Kind of like a person. Basically the whole idea, the whole video was about relationships and people. And, you know, that's why if you, if you Steve was surprised, I put dating advice in tags. Because dating advice are one is actually one of the most searched for terms on YouTube. So, uh dating advice, and it fits in, because it's about relationships, it's about people getting hurt, and, you know, you can, you can get a dent in you that'll last your lifetime until you, of course, get melted down, and literally will probably end up having your atoms be in other people and other animals. To be really explicit about that thing that was meant to be slightly poetic, but, uh, that was what Dent was about, about, you know, damage. And, uh, you know, I said, at first, I said there's about a billion quarters out there. First I said six billion, but thought that was too out there and too much of a hint to I'm talking about people, but hey. And uh, my dad and I talked about, he's reading Life of Pi now, He's he's gone through uh, one book every two nights for three days now. I mean, three books now. First he read Next by Michael Crichton, then he read Prey by Michael Crichton. Now he's reading Life of Pi. And so far these are books that I've read before since I'm recommending them to him. And, uh, you know, they, hey, hey, you probably like this book. But right now he's reading Life of Pi, which was a great book, definitely. I recommend that to you if you haven't read it. And, uh, it's pretty sweet. 